40% of women have had something done and they don't talk about it, right? I'm gonna talk about it. I value being honest more than I care about the people that are gonna say shit about it after. So what's the day looking like today? <sighs> Dude, today's busy. Before anything, bring our laundry down. Then I need to go check the old unit because people delivered shit there still. While I walk, I have like three things I need to review. We need to film a video. Portfolio company check-in, interview with a CFO, portfolio ops huddle. Then we have the full team meeting, have the weekly leadership meeting or a pipeline meeting, one of our portfolio company check-ins and another portfolio company check-in. Take a walk break, go to see an office building. How do you handle all of that? I have two assistants and so honestly they saved my fucking life. So if you just like, have a team, it makes your life a lot easier. That's decaf, there's also a cap. Mm -hmm. Thanks, How are you? <laughs> this looks like a rock. I learned a lot of like character traits and skills and dealing with people by observing people who are older than me or further ahead than me. Just like go out to a restaurant or like how they talk to their doorman. Thank you so much. Oh, hair new? Yeah. I like it. Or how they receive their mail or how they deal with bad news. So like, you can't ask that question like, hey, how do you receive bad news? Someone can like describe it to you, but if you see them get bad news and then you immediately watch their reaction, you'll learn a hundred times more from that than anything they could tell you. That's where I get pumped about the vlog. We did like the Spanish version of offers. For some reason, I opened one the other day and I was like, they look like shit. They said, can you send like barcodes to all the books that look like shit? And I was like, well, it's all of them, but. <laughs> so I have to send the barcodes to my dad because my dad does all the book stuff. Hello? Hi dad. When you said a picture of the last inside page, do you mean pr like print, like the paragraph or of the barcode? I'm actually not a fan of inconveniences at all. In fact, when they asked me to talk about this, I'm like, ew, I hate that I even did that. If I'm the closest in proximity and somebody else is not gonna be able to get to it for a significant period of time and it's gonna help somebody on the team, then I'll do it. Okay, yeah, that's what they wanted to know, what those barcodes were and, uh, and those, uh, where it was printed and what date. Okay. And, yeah. Okay, I'll do it right now and send it to you. All right, thank you. Yep, love you. All right. Love you too. Bye. Bye. Do I like doing little things like that? Not really. I usually have other people, like I have a whole admin team, but in that moment it felt like that would just be lazy. I'm almost down, I'm down nine pounds. Why are you looking at me like that? He doesn't encourage me. I do encourage you. I'm happy that you're happy, whatever it is. You look great. And I, I see it as like you wearing different outfits. Like you look great in a ball game, you look great in gym clothes. And so it's like you look great at 10 pounds, you look great at 10 pounds heavier. Yeah. I would say that actually health is a byproduct of me wanting to look a certain way. You know, when I lost a hundred pounds, the motivation was not to be healthy. It was to be a representation of what excellence looks like. And then as I got into business, I noticed that when I worked out, it felt like I was much better after for my team. Though what got me started was wanting to look good, what kept me going during the times that I was running the business that were really chaotic were that I felt like I was way better for the team when I worked out. We actually just bought a new condo. So I'm gonna give you guys a little sneak peek of our new condo. Alex's temporary office. So this is going to be my office because we're making his office in one of the giant closets. So a lot of you have seen content where Alex and I talked about how we like sold our big house, sold all of our cars, sold all of our shit, and just like went into renting. And so the reason that we decided to buy that condo is honestly like anything that we wanted to live in, you have to buy, you can't rent. Kitchen, much more refrigerator space. The whole time we'll be in our last place. The freezer had been set too low, so we were always like, I got the ice cream, it's so hard. I told Alex, I was like, this freezer is so much better, dude. Like, the ice cream is like scoopable. And he was like, what the fuck? It was just the temperature. Guest room. They showed us this one after we moved in. Whoa. So it's like a secret closet. I was like, well, that's kind of cool. Well, that's right. So there's like music, <laughs> so you can play music in here while you're going to the bathroom. 
you can like decide how to flush and then it's like a bidet as well. This is the TV right here and it comes out and it's, you can turn it either way so it'll like 360 rotate. I love the bathroom. The shower has like a bajillion nozzles. <laughs> so you gotta sit on this couch. The only thing we were saying is we're like, we like have guests over and this is not like a like sit up couch. It's like you're like, you know, I like working from home. I, I probably would like to do both. I mean, that's really ideal for me. I'd like to have an office that we can go into. I never want to force anyone to go into an office. It's been seven years that I've run a remote company. I've been able to mitigate a lot of the negatives that people find from working from home, from learning how to do it in a way that still fosters culture and, and relationships. There's like your podcast cover in the kitchen. <laughs> Isn't it because you love looking at yourself in the morning? No, that's not even my face anymore. People are like distracted by it and they're not even like looking at my content, they're just like talking about my face. And I'm like, no, this is not AI Layla. This is Layla after she got her brows and her nose done. You know, a lot of people ask why. I'm like, I don't know, I wanted to. So it's like, took the like hump off my nose. So he was like, it'll be really nice if we do the nose and then your eyes, you just pull it. It's almost to the side and up. And so I did that too. I wanted to be public because I think a lot of women are ashamed of getting things done. They're ashamed of having filler, Botox. By the way, I've had both of those for like the last six years. I have done all these things in my business career and never mixed the personal with the business. It's important in a way to be open about both just so people know who I really am. All right, see you team. We were talking about adjusting our whole team I think it's a little bit repetitive because I just know the other meetings that we now have because we have a bigger team and it's expanding. Those meetings cover some of the stuff on this meeting. The point is that the information gets disseminated. How it gets disseminated usually changes based on the size. So like when we were smaller, a full team meeting makes sense to distribute like functional department information. But when you are then having a full functional department meeting, which now we like are having more of those, then to also say that information on the full team meeting is just duplicative and then people are disengaged. Well, that's all I had for, for pipeline update today. So we took his numbers, we put our deal flow through it. If we were to basically take him on and then eventually feed him deal flow from e-commerce companies. And so that's like kind of the stance we're gonna take. It's like- What is a pipeline meeting? A lot of companies that inquire every month to be a portfolio company. The pipeline is to see like, well, where are all the opportunities? Who has come into the pipeline? We have levels of filtration, like somebody who calls all those people. And if they pass the call, they go on to somebody who has a thick call with them. And if they pass that person, they have another thick call. And if they pass that person, they talk to our head of business development. And if they pass that person, they talk to the head of business development, plus a couple people from the team that are on the deal board. And then if they pass them, they talk to me. So I think it's understanding the purpose of the meeting. I know that I have meetings that in a year I will not have. I have to email a couple of people back and then I'm probably gonna try and Finished my makeup, but I still haven't done. Cool. Thank you, Justin, for putting all of that together. Yeah, thank you guys. I don't feel tired. I just have a uh, headache. Not like a headache. It's just, uh, it's actually just since my surgery. It, I make a lot of expressions. My head just gets sore. I still haven't put them on. <laughs> God damn it to hell. <laughs> so now what? Uh, I mean, I have like 10 minutes until the next meeting. What do you usually try to do with those 10 minutes? I have uh, people that I need to respond to, but I'm not gonna do that until I, I have a 30 minute break in like, I think an hour and a half. And so I have a couple emails that I need to respond to. I like that there's mirrors everywhere in this place. You can like leave them on for a couple days too. They look a lot better. Mascara like comes off all day. I think it looks more uh, like natural. I value what I look like. I value my appearance. Like I do place value there. Like I'm not gonna pretend like I'm not vain. <laughs> I got plastic surgery because I care what I look like. You know, whether you guys think it's bad that I did this or good that I do this is divorced from the fact that all I care about is that I'm honest. That's all I promised. I'm not saying that what I do is like setting the best example for people. I'm not saying I'm Gandhi out here. I thought that it would look better if I changed my nose. And I do think it looks better. Like, I think a lot of people assume like, like you must have just really hated your face. I'm like, no, I actually, I've always thought I'm very pretty. Let me show you the world. Since I was like a little girl, I mean, I like doing makeup and hair and all that stuff. Like, it's not like I must sacrifice because of business. We had just made that playbook. So that's perfect timing because we just have the whole thing ready. Not saying I recommend it or think people should do it. 
I'm just pro doing whatever the fuck you want. I feel good about these conversations. I just am myself, apparently and honestly, and then if people like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. Hi, Layla, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you today? Sprucing up, getting good lighting in here. Uh, probably replace the, so all the flooring is the rubber. Okay. What we're looking for in an office is less traditional. But you can smell that he smokes. I know. Fuck! What? Fucking cockroach! Oh my god. It just like jumped out at me. Someone find me a goddamn office in Vegas. <laughs> if you can find me an office in Las Vegas, I will fucking pay you a million dollars. Not a million dollars, but I will give you really great commission. Parking garage. Until it becomes the mega gym. So you know that's what he's wanting. And this is why it's been so hard that Alex wants like a full commercial gym in the office. Really, we're looking for a place where we can mostly facilitate media. We have the idea to have a YouTube studio for me, a YouTube studio for Alex, a podcast studio for the two of us. I think after you get surgery, like you're not thinking about work at all. And so I actually then looked at it as like, this is a great opportunity to delegate to the team to give them more opportunity to take on these challenges that normally I do. I thought the recovery was pretty good. I just decided to go on camera two weeks later. I was like, I don't give a fuck. I'm not gonna stop making content. I think I want to be open about it because 40% of women have had some kind of cosmetic procedure. Yes, carpet, walls. I think it's wicked. Yeah, it depends on. I haven't been too bothered by it. I just don't like when people say, why are you being secretive about it? I'm like, oh my gosh, I put it everywhere. Little like, it just looked a little old. So maybe just yeah, like, whatever yeah. we can do that's like the lightest touch to okay. like, just make it look spruced up a little bit. Okay. Do you want this to be your office? You have a little area right here. You can do little presentation stuff. Oh, wow. it's like and then we could make this the main really office. Sweet. And they could just sleep in my office. <laughs> Shower in there. <gasps> Ooh, this is like... You can get ready in here. That's literally all you needed to say is there's a fucking shower in here and I'm in. I can just make this the whole like get like literally get ready area. I can put a closet right here. What if we turned it into pink? And there's a closet here with my racks of clothing to wear. I too care about what I look like. To be like, I don't care what I look like is not true. I do. Are we stuck for sure? I'm hungry. <laughs> you know, like the only person that I care that likes what I look like is my fucking husband. Thank you again, Stella. I think all the assumptions I assumed people would make were correct, which was funny. I look, um, but it doesn't bother me. I'm not gonna not do something because of what I'm afraid people are gonna think. Do you wanna do the drives here or sit in there? Fine. Hello. I also appreciate those of you who didn't support it because it has actually just made me better. Every time I see somebody who says something you know, negative about it, uh, I think it's an opportunity for me to be better and more resilient and I appreciate it. I appreciate all of you guys who have been so supportive. I just love that you guys understand that I'm just trying to be honest and I don't expect people to like support the decision but I love that you're supporting me being honest. I feel like on camera I get nervous or like I'm more intense or I'm just not as much myself when it's like direct to camera content. It feels like a show more than it is like me. That version of myself is not what has created the success. The information has but the demeanor has not. I think like the demeanor I have in the vlogs is like much more aligned. Like that's what it looks like and that's how you act, I think, to like create a good culture. Thanks for the feedback on the first vlog. Like curious what you guys want to see more of and just appreciate all the support. You know, we hope to keep doing these if you guys like them. So let us know.